So I decided to make videos for chapter nine because you'll be doing trigonometry um, in your next math class. And it's really important to have a very strong hold on right triangles, similar triangles, and the basic right triangle trig that you're going to learn in this chapter. We're going to go back and remind you about the definition of the Pythagorean theorem that we used in integrated math one. And it says in a right triangle, The square of the length of the hypotenuse is equal to the sum of the squares of the lengths of the legs. So, um, quick reminder about some terminology for a right triangle. The hypotenuse is the side opposite the right angle. And the other two pieces are called legs. I'll call that one leg one, and I'll call this one leg two. And what that theorem is telling me is that the length of the hypotenuse squared is equal to the sum of the squares of the lengths of the legs. And the way that if we were using letters, um, I'll call this one A, this one B, and this one C, we would say that C squared is equal to A squared plus B squared. And I know in elementary school, the first time you saw it, you probably did A squared plus B squared equals C squared, but this is very, very important. You put the C squared on the left because the other theorems that you have in this section if you have this relationship, you have a right triangle. If the longest side squared is smaller than the sum of the other two sides, then you have an acute triangle. And if the largest side squared is bigger than the sum of the squares of the other two sides, you have an obtuse triangle. The less than sign means I got a small triangle. The greater than sign means I have a big triangle. And it's very important that the biggest side, so this is the longest side, goes on the left-hand side if you're going to do any of those relationships. Okay. Where it comes into play for us is if we are solving for C, or the longest side, it's going to be the square root of the sum of the squares. Okay? If we're solving for, so this is if we're solving for big. So this is the hypotenuse. If we're solving for a leg. So I'm going to call it A. We're still going to be taking the square root but we're going to be taking it of the hypotenuse squared minus the other leg squared. Okay. So if you're solving for a leg, there is a minus sign here and the hypotenuse always comes first. And it doesn't matter if I'm solving for leg B, I could just rearrange the letters here. I get C squared minus A squared. One of the things I hope you wrote down in your book are what they call Pythagorean triples. Those are integers that form right triangles. I would expect you, I won't say memorize, but be able to immediately recognize any of the first four that are listed on 
in that book. Because any multiples of these are going to be right triangles. I will tell you right now that 3, 4, 5, and 5, 12, 13 are used a lot on standardized tests. They'll use 3, 4, 5. They could even say that that's 9, 12, 15. Hey, just by multiplying by 3. I could say, hey, if he goes 300 miles in one, in west and then he goes 400 miles north, how far away is he from his starting point? Well, he would be 500 miles. So any multiples of those will also work. So let's go through on solving some example type problems so that you are good to go on this. So I'm going to draw um, six triangles. I'm going to do six problems of this type. And then I'm going to do a few of another type of question that can be asked for this. Now, this is one of those where you need to start becoming very comfortable with simplifying radicals. Because once we get into the trigonometry aspect of it, they're going to want some exact answers. And um, it's a good thing to get in context with because a lot of times on standardized tests, these types of questions are going to be non-calculator questions. So they expect you to be able to do these without a calculator and be able to simplify the radicals. Um, hypotenuse is 77, 55, X, um, 48, 90, and X. So for the first one, I'm trying to find the hypotenuse. So my hypotenuse is the square root of 81 squared plus 100 squared. Now, go ahead and take a calculator. And if you get an integer from that answer, you're good to go. But what I'm going to do is I am going to do the part that's underneath the root in the calculator. Um, for those that are, and I get 16, 561. This one gives me a decimal, okay? Um, now, if Desmos lets you use a decimal, go ahead and put the decimal in. This one's approximately 128.7. What I'm going to do is I'm going to see what numbers I think can go into this. So 7, 8, 29. Um, I don't think that goes in there. Um, I don't think that this simplifies one. Six five six one. Um, the exact answer would be the square root of sixteen five sixty one. Approximate answer is one twenty eight point seven. For the second one, we're trying to find a leg, so we're going to be doing a subtraction problem. We're going to be doing the square root of eight squared minus four squared. At least do this part before you try to do any work. 8 squared minus 4 squared is the square root of 48. Well, the square root of 48, I know, is the square root of 16 times the square root of 3. My exact answer would be 4 root 3. Oops, I need to lower this. I'm sorry about that. Or, in the, or if they let you do a decimal approximation, the square root of 48 is... Uh, approximately 6.9. The next one, um, I'm going to do it two different ways. First way I'm going to do it is I, I just look at it and I know what the answer is going to be. This right here is 3 times 5. This is 4 times 5. That means this one has to be 5 times 5, which is 25. That's how I do it by using the Pythagorean triples. Now, without using the Pythagorean triples, 
I would do the square root of 20 squared minus 15 squared. And that would be the um, square root of 625. Actually, that's supposed to be a plus. That's 400 plus 225 is 625. And the square root of 625 is 25. Next one, I'm trying to find the hypotenuse. So it's the square root of a sum, 6 squared plus 100 squared. So 6 squared plus 100 squared is 10036. Zero, zero, now, I will tell you right now that 4 goes into that answer. Now, if you were to put it in the calculator, It's going to tell you it's approximately 100.2. But I know 4 goes into this because 4 goes into 36. I know it's, I'm going to at least get the square root of 4 times something. So 1 divided by 4, which is 2509. And um, 2509, I can't take the square root of, so this would be an exact answer of 2 times the square root of 2509. Now, again, read directions. Um, they may just tell you to put it into decimal form. But again, be comfortable um, working with things. Next one, I am trying to find a leg, so it's a subtraction problem. 77 squared minus 55 squared. And I get the square root of 2904. I know that 4 goes into it because 4 goes into the last two digits, so I know I can do at least a square root of 4. So 2904 divided by 4 is 726. Um, I know, let's see, 8, 15, um, I know, I know another 2 goes in here, so I have the square root of 4 times the square root of 2, let's do 726 divided by 2, which is 363. I know 121 goes into 363, so I have the square root of 4 times the square root of 121 times the square root of 2, and then the square root of 3. I get 2 times one, two times 11 is 22, root 6. That's how I could do it without a calculator. But with the calculator, the square root of 2904, uh, approximately 53.9. And the last one, I'm finding the hypotenuse, so I'm going to want to add 48 squared plus 90 squared. And square, uh, let's go 48 squared plus 90 squared. Um, square root of 10404. Um... I'm going to try something weird, um, a 2 with a 100 in front of it. Let's try that. What's 102 times 102? Uh, 10404. So this is 102. Now, you could have put the square root of 10404 in a calculator. It would have given you directly the 102. I have no problem with you using a calculator to do any of the intermediate work on these, um, but... The calculators I'm letting you use do not give you the simplified roots, so you do need to be comfortable working with some simplified roots. The next type of questions you need to be able to answer are, hey, do these three sides make a right triangle, a cute triangle, or an obtuse triangle? Or, hey, do they even not make a triangle at all? So I'm going to give you two triangles. I'm going to give you two sets of three sides.
And the first thing you need to do is ask yourself, is it a triangle? And in that, for it to be a triangle, any two sides have to be bigger than the third. And that was from last year when we did, um, I believe we did that last year with the triangle inequality theorem. So we have to ask ourselves, hey, is 90 and 216 bigger than 234? Yep. Is 216 plus 234 bigger than 90? Yes. And it's 90 plus 234 bigger than 216. Yes, that works. Is 1 plus 1 bigger than a number that's smaller than 2? Yep. Is 1 plus a number that's about 2 bigger than 1? 1 plus 1 is bigger than that. 1 plus square root of 3 is bigger than 1. So both of those will form triangles. Now I need to see what kind they are. And you're always going to put the biggest piece on the left, and you're going to compare it to the sum of the squares of the other two pieces. So on the left, I get 234 squared, which is 54, 756. On the right, I get 90 squared plus 216 squared, which is 54, 756. They are equal to each other, so this is a right triangle. Okay. On the one on the right, I'm going to take the square root of 3 squared, compare it to 1 squared plus 1 squared. Square root of 3 squared is 3. Uh, 1 squared is 1. 1 squared is 1. 1 plus 1 is 2. 3 is bigger than 2, so I have an obtuse triangle. So that's the information you need to um, basically do anything possible from section 9.1. Hope you have a good time.